Hi and welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video is on inguinal hernia. For introduction, a hernia is defined as the protrusion of part or whole of an organ or tissue through the wall of the cavity that normally contains it. Inguinal hernia involve abdominal contents passing into the inguinal canal and can continue into the scrotum. Let's take a look at a brief explanation on the inguinal canal. The inguinal canal is a 4 to 6 cm long oblique passage along the lower anterior abdominal wall, above the inguinal ligament. It allows for the passage of the spermatic cord, testicular, and cremasteric vessels into the scrotum. The canal consists of two openings. Deep inguinal ring is a defect in transversalis fascia which is located 2 cm above midpoint of inguinal ligament. And superficial inguinal ring, a triangular defect in the aponeuroses of the external oblique, located above and medial to the pubic tubercle. Inguinal hernia can be classified into direct and indirect type. For direct inguinal hernia, the bowel enters the inguinal canal, directly through a weakness in the posterior wall of the canal, termed Hesselbach's triangle. Whereas for indirect inguinal hernia, the bowel enters the inguinal canal via the deep inguinal ring. Direct inguinal hernia lies medial to the inferior epigastric vessels, whereas indirect inguinal hernia lies lateral to the vessels. The risk factors of inguinal hernia are males, increasing age, raised intra-abdominal pressure such as coughing, and obesity. For clinical features, patients may complain of having a lump in the groin, which disappears with minimal pressure, or when he lies down. May have mild to moderate discomfort. If the hernia becomes incarcerated, it becomes painful, and the lump cannot be reduced. Some cases may present with bowel obstruction. To differentiate whether it is a direct or indirect inguinal hernia, we can do the deep ring occlusion test. The examiner must reduce the hernia and then place pressure over the deep inguinal ring, which is located at the midpoint of the inguinal ligament. Then ask the patient to cough. If the hernia protrudes despite occlusion of deep inguinal ring, it is direct hernia. If the hernia does not protrude, it means the deep ring occlusion test is positive, which suggests indirect hernia. This is because the bowel enters the inguinal canal via the deep inguinal ring and indirect inguinal hernia. For investigations, it is typically a clinical diagnosis. Imaging should only be considered in patients if there is diagnostic uncertainty or to exclude other pathology. If necessary, an ultrasound scan is recommended as first-line imaging in the outpatient setting. For patients with features of obstruction or strangulation, CT imaging will be required. Any patient with a symptomatic inguinal hernia, such as significant mass or discomfort, should be offered surgical intervention. It can be either open or laparoscopic surgery. Open hernia repair such as mesh repair using the Liechtenstein technique is very commonly used. A laparoscopic approach is preferred in those with bilateral or recurrent inguinal hernias. It can be either total extraperitoneal, TEP or transabdominal preperitoneal approach. TAPP These are some serious complications of inguinal hernia. Irreducible or incarcerated hernia, where the contents of the hernia are unable to return to their original cavity. Obstruction, where the bowel lumen has become obstructed, leading to the clinical features of bowel obstruction. And strangulation, where the compression of the hernia has compromised the blood supply, leading to the bowel becoming ischemic. That's all for this video. Thank you.